Hello, welcome back to the Fish Locker. Today I'm going to be talking about small boats. I've been asked by my subscribers, they've said that buying their first small boats can be quite an intimidating process. So I'm hoping to be able to compare several small boats between the sizes of 15 to 19 feet. Talking about pros, cons, and speaking to people who already own them. Just an honest representation of what it's like owning these boats. I picked four of the most common boats that are available. I'm going to be looking at an Orkney, a Warrior, Wilson Flyer and an Explorer and I will compare the prices of these boats new second hand obviously it depends not only on the market on the condition but also on the buyer and the seller I'm just out for a little bit of easy fishing my friend Chris on his uh, on his Warrior 150 yep. proof you do catch fish I'm just going to take you for a little quick walk around right, it's, uh, it's a 150 so it's 15 foot I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak up the front so I can show you the back. This is one of the benefits of this boat towards my opening is it does have a walkway around the outside. That is the back of the boat there. So even though it's only 15 foot which is a foot and a half shorter than mine it does still have a lot of good space. It doesn't have the anchor well up the front but you can have that as an optional extra can't you? See, there's plenty of free, plenty of free space up front. With hatches, you can see it is single skinned, being that it's straight to the outer hull. Whereas other boats that are double skinned, you would have a cleaner finish that would be straight, but you would lose this void of space. The same with the back here. He's got ample space down here for his for his fuel tanks and extras that you put up the sides. You're running a 60 horsepower four-stroke Yamaha, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. But the engine, the sorry, the hull could be rated to 75. Yeah. You've got auxiliary on the edge. We did mention that there is quite a large engine well. Not only would that be easy for stepping out, stepping in if you're going to be going off the back, but also for things like the bucket. We did talk about it being possible usable space as having a live bait tank somewhere like here. But there you can see. They are well known and well used fishing boats. Yeah, I mean, you can see here with the two of us fishing very comfortably. I mean you've you've had a couple of three people out in here before. Yeah, three on here. Do the extra foot for the three really, but for two it makes it more comfortable, isn't it? You did mention though with the 60 that you you had wished you'd kind of gone. 75, yeah. When I'm by myself, not a problem. But when there's two of us, you just could do that extra bit. Just get you on the plane. Your cruise, well, it, it picks up on the plane really yeah. easily. I've noticed that it is an incredibly stable platform when you steam it. I mean, you look today and it is like a mill pond. But when we're heading out, we did end out into a little bit of weather. But you're saying that, um, how would you reach your cruising speed out of this? We were coming out at like 40,000 revs and you were doing what, 16 to 18? 16 to 18, yeah. Depending on, but cruise that comfortably all day. And you'd, fuel consumption, you were saying with, with a 60, you'd do a, a, a 25 litre tank for a day steaming around. Yeah, pretty much. It is good on fuel. Man, um, bearing, in mind, <laughs> bearing in mind that man's a 30 horsepower, so it's half. Yeah, I do. I get a lot better fuel consumption, but it takes me twice as long to get everywhere. Well, um, I will put a few bits into here to try and show the boat from different angles, using the drone and when it's steaming. But yeah, it's um, an incredibly solid platform. And one of the things that you'll notice about with man on most of our videos, when I'm walking about, you'll see me you can see this even though when you get both of us on one side of the boat even though it does lean over it doesn't doesn't rock as much Warriors are well known and well respected fishing boats and they are classified by size. 150 being 15 foot, 160 being 16 foot, 165, 170, 175, 180 or even a 6 meter. Some owners have reported that the hull's porpoise when underway, but properly balancing and trimming the vessel should avoid this. You can see here at half throttle there is no problem at all. At the time of making this video, brand new package deals from Warrior ready to hit the water were between 21 and 33,000 pound depending on the spec. 
Second hand vessels do hold their value well, and depending on condition, for a 165 you could expect to pay anything between 10 to 15,000, and for a 170 to 180, 20 to 25,000. What a cracking little fish around on this boat. I was uh, I was just talking to Chris about some of the modifications that he'd made. Because um, when you bought it, you said they only had one single battery, so you've had. Yeah, I put a dual battery on it, uh, new finder, waterproof switch panel. There was a big bench at the back, um, which you took out. So that, just how far you... out did that stick from here? Well, you can see the screw marks coming out to back there. Okay, so you've gained yourself a foot and a half. Of, yeah, easy. Foot and a half of deck space right across. So what are you talking? That'll be six square feet of deck space. Yeah, made all the difference. Yeah. Um, well, do, you work pots in here as well, so. Yeah. You just what stack your pots up down yeah, inside stack of here. Yeah, along the back and just chuck them out as steam along. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Right, well, we're out now on Will's boat. It is a. You say it was a Wilson Flyer Pilot Five Nineteen. Pilot Five Nineteen. Nineteen foot, you say. Nineteen eight, yeah. Just shy of six just minutes. Shy. And I will just give you a quick spin around. I'll go up the front in a second and show you. One thing you'll see immediately, I mean, although it is three and a half feet longer than my boat, is it does have an awful lot more deck space. And I'll just really quickly poke you up the front so you can see. Again, it has a walk around, which the Warrior does, but my Orkney doesn't, and he has an anchor well up the front. So looking back down on the deck, you can see loads of deck space plenty of storage up the front oh, I will say immediately I've just sit back there the gunnel height is just above my knee so reaching down to the water here for things like pots is fine just like my Orkney whereas the warrior comes up to maybe another six inches doesn't it how long have you had the boat did you say 12 months 18 months something like that it does sit really well at anchor it's um what type of hull did you say it was uh, cathedral right Whereas, whereas my Orkney has got quite quite a sharp V, and you might notice in some of my videos where we just end up rocking around all over the place. This is sat really well at anchor, and we've. Um, what would you do? You said that. What modifications have you made to it? You said you took the door off, didn't you? The door out just to give you a bit more room, easier yeah. access inside. No, uh, I would put seats on it. That'd be one of the main things to do. Yeah. But the added benefit of not having them there is you have gained All this much deck room. space. And engine on the back you've um man's got a 30. what's chris got buddy 60 isn't it? if it isn't a 60 i'll put an annotation in here because i've forgotten <laughs> um you were saying to me there i was amazed at your cruising speed generally with a 90 baron it's a 19 foot boat 17 18 knots at how many revs you say three seven to three, four. so three and a half to four yeah. and max speed trimmed out 27 28 and it will even knows your mile per gallon, don't you? About 80 PMR. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love it. I am a I am a numbers person, I do like that type of thing. I've got ample space down the back of here for putting your fuel cans and for your auxiliary outboard. This is good as well. I don't have a spray shield, so I used to have to spend most of my time crouched down looking through here so I don't get soaking wet. I was just looking underneath here and that's like his, his bilge pump set up the same a plug at the back the number of times that you see people launching a boat and they don't put the plug in the back it's hilarious I mean, you almost see them yourself yeah quite often launch the boat down a slip and then go and make the car up and then come back and there's about eight inches of water inside the boat With a shallow cathedral hull, these boats are great on calm days, but common opinion is that they're quite nose heavy. You can see here when compared to the Warrior where the wave break is. One of the issues that was brought to my attention about these second hand boats is the rigidity of the decks. Some of the older vessels do need the decks replacing and a strengthening. Comparing the shape of the hull to that of the Norkling and thinking of it like a wedge, you can immediately see which would be the better boat for cutting into waves and weather. Looking at the wake behind the boat, you can see how the deeper hulls of the Orkney and the Warrior displace the water, whereas the flyer sits upon it. At the time of making this video, second-hand Wilson flyers were fetching anything between five and ten thousand pounds, depending on size and spec. Right, we're going to have a look at my boat. Mine's an Orkney 520. Usually, when you're watching the videos, this is what you'll see. 
you will see this part of the boat which is the after the deck now for a 16 and a half foot boat we have got quite a bit of deck space this is what you don't usually see so steering control I have two seats underneath both of these are storage and I have a first aid kit in that one the two compartments that I have at the back this one has got the battery and manual bilge pump and in this one I have fuel tank and filter I just keep it really simple I mean this this boat is a tool it's, it's a fishing tool the same as you would do like a rod or a reel you just have to keep it simple and keep it keep it working now for me so far the space storage space has been fine I mean I carry the anchor rope this is my cuddy cover underneath there is where I keep my anchor boy you see the big yellow fender and in here I've got extra rope so I've got my spare anchor and all my I've actually I've got a video on the fish locker channel which is small boat safety and it shows you what I have in there I have like paddles a little bit of toolkits a little bit extra petrol bits and pieces but yeah this is the inside of the boat that you don't usually see I run a separate GPS and fish finder but that's something different electronic switch run switch panel fuse boxes underneath there controls that is it that simple now what I will do actually is I will take you up you can see on the bow here I have a little anchor well where I keep a little bit of rope my chain and my anchor a couple of fair leads my bow roller that's it one of the things that I will say is the little bits of modifications that have been made to this boat these don't come as standard my rod holders also it does come with railings there was some railings fitted to there and there was a seat on this side because I've been working pots that's why I've got a lobster in there I don't just keep a lobster on the board <laughs> because I'm working pots I've taken out the railings and the seat on one side that's why I've done it like that we have an auxiliary engine bracket I had one to start with I had one to start with but the reason why I took it off was because it affected the balance when I was running before a bit of sea it stuck its, it stuck its shoulder in a little bit and the outboard engine affected the balance and I thought I would rather rather do without if you can't trust the engine you're going to see with you shouldn't be going to see so that's that's why I only run with one engine what I'm going to do now is I will get the drone up have a little bit of a fly around the boat so you can see the shape of it and I'm going to try a little bit of steaming so you can see how it runs but yeah I've got a 30 horsepower four stroke Yamaha on the back and um, generally steaming around like on a day like today where it's flat calm and there's no tide I will run at about 14 to 16 knots at 40,000 revs the fastest I have ever had out of this boat was about 20 to 21 knots but that was absolutely flat calm trimmed right up just me on the boat with the tide generally cruising speed I go between 12 and 14 knots it might take me a little bit longer to get there but it is very good on fuel one of the working differences between my boat and the warrior which was Chris's boat that we had a look at was that man it doesn't have a walk around you haven't got as much space to stand up up front because I've got an anchor well and you can't walk around the sides so if I'm going to be working my anchor what I have to do is I have to go through the forward hatch all you do is you've just got a hatch that flips up and you just work with your cleat up front or what I'll do is I'll run what's called a lazy painter which is a rope from the cleat through the bowsprit and round to this cleat here so I can work my anchor off the side of the boat and I don't need to keep going up through the front you just adapt to the type of boat that you've got I would say that neither one's better than the other both have their pros both have their cons on the back also I do have I forgot to mention I do have a boarding ladder for when I'm diving thousand revs 12 and a half knots against the tide you can see by the layout that this is a working boat design more deck than cutty just like the warrior maximum deck space but with just a narrower bow for cutting into the seas think of it like a wedge for splitting wood Orkney no longer make the 520 but second hand they go for anything between four to ten thousand pounds the newer model is the 522 and at the time of producing this video they were priced around sixteen thousand pounds Looking at the bow you can see how the deep V hull cuts into the water, comparing it to the Wilson Flyer Cathedral hull which simply sits upon it. 
Without any trim you can see how the boat starts to rise up onto the plane. By looking at the wake behind you can clearly see how the hull shape cuts into the water, even more than the Warrior. The deeper angled design of the Orkney's hull allows you to cut into the waves rather than trying to sit upon them, completely different to the Wilson Flyer, making the Orkney's not as fast but much better for heading into waves and weather. Now we've come to see one of our friends, Explorer Elite. Now, <laughs> as I've tried to remember three or four times, he's 16 and a half foot. And I'll take you for a quick walk around. The other boats that we've looked at, we have been on the water, so we have been able to see them underway. He hasn't had a chance to put his boat in the water yet, so we're just going to have a walk around here. He has got a 60 fitted, but as you can see from there, it is rated 280. It looks like an awful lot more boat than mine is. The Orkney, which is the same length, but yet doesn't have the same beam. As you can see on the inside, it's like five and a half feet internal beam, and it carries it right up to the front. Taking a look inside, as we are, you can see immediately the amount of deck space and the open beam. So two fixed seats with storage, and up the front storage again. It is the layout of the inside, I'll bring you back here to talk to you. The layout of the inside is just like a Warrior, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. When we were talking about it, it is pretty much the same stand as a Warrior. Now, what were you thinking when you were buying it? I don't mean, what were you thinking when you were buying it? I mean, <laughs> what was your thought process? What was the um, pros and cons that you weighed up when you were buying it? So to be honest, my budget was the main thing. Um, covering the cost of the boat, any repairs that might need to be done. You know, when you buy a boat, you may find something once you get it home, that sort of stuff. Um, but it was a safety, really, with a young family, a young lad. Oh, that's yeah. I'll just show sure there, you can see the... Um, having, obviously, the gunnel's quite high. There was no risk um, of him tipping overboard and such. Whereas on your Orkney, um, John, they're quite low, aren't they, compared to these? <laughs> yeah. So We uh, did go out fishing in it the other day, and because he's used to this height of three board, it was, um, yeah. We nearly lost him a couple of times. I'll just pull out the tape measure there. You just measure the height of the free board, just so yeah. you. On the Orkney, it's just under knee height. And yet here, we can look straight away. You're talking just shy of three foot of free board. So yeah, if you've got if you've got little kids or if you're un unsure about how stable you are on your feet, something with a higher free board like this would be much better. You haven't made any alterations from buying it new, have you? No, what you see today is how I bought it. I mean, there's other things I would like to do to it, an upgrade, just like repair the, the rod holders that are down here. Um, maybe um, a more sturdy kind of rod holders on the back frame there. It is um, It I is mean, a very simple setup that you've got there. I'm sorry, and you were just talking, you were saying that you would like to, one of the other alterations? Oh yeah, the other alteration really is to have um, twin batteries really, one for my, my um, the equipment here, yeah. the, the finders and stuff and obviously the other um, battery there um, and I think having discussed it had a look at it it would be a simple process it's just getting that time um, that yeah. is that is great there for a safety aspect like you were just saying is the um, the duplicate batteries just in case one ever cuts out you've got your two fuel tanks for the same and um, yeah and underneath the fuel tanks obviously is where the bilge pump is um, gives good access under there once the once you remove the, uh, the tanks um, I mean, my only other issue that I really would like to consider is putting in some sort of seating at the rear, um, which isn't there at the moment. We adapt by using fold away picnic chairs, which are light and foldable and stow away. Um, but I think looking at the Warrior, you've got a seat there. And I've always liked the thought of that, especially if you're seaming back into shore or out to a mark, maybe. Um, but the point you've just cracked on straight away there is if you've got a seat here, you're going to take away so you're going to be stuck with half of the deck space, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Whereas with the folding picnic chairs that you've been using, yeah. all you do is you just fold them up and, and put them away. And they cup holders, so, you know, it's in, aren't <laughs> we? Yeah, you, um, the windows in here, how old did you say this was? This is, this uh, is a 2006 model, this one. And it is, it's held up fantastically, yeah, well, I've done nothing you? to it, and uh, the guy that I purchased it from said it was as he bought it, so. That was, that was one of the main things that I hope that we've impressed them through this is that um, you don't want to overstep your budget. You weigh up, as Dan was saying, weigh up what you've got, what you need and what you might need. There's no point stretching yourself to the absolute maximum of your budget and then the first stumbling block like your first maintenance or the first fault is you're completely skinned. And don't go over what you've agreed on because if there is anything that comes up after that you will always be kicking yourself you'll always be thinking Absolutely. i wish i hadn't spent that money on it whereas something like this that 
because he weighed it up he was going to be having his family in it because he wanted a fishing boat that was stable was safe and you do a little bit of diving as well don't you so you have got your yeah your I mean, one of the other things for the, this size boat as well was able to be able to tow it launch and retrieve each time as you see it's on on our driveway or on our on our yard um i don't have the luxury of a mooring at the moment um due to waiting lists and me being a bit tight as well but it's it's manageable on, on an average family car brilliant we were just talking about this canopy here now that is a feature that comes on the warriors as well but i don't have it on the orkney and um Dan was saying, although they don't use it very often, there have been the odd days when they've been out and it's been absolutely roaring sun and it has saved them from it. So it is, uh, that's an optional extra that you can have on there. Is that in the water though, John? It's quite, yeah. it's not so bad, is it? Well, your water line comes up to here. But even for Chris, so... But you have still got a, a high freeboard. Seat, don't you? Yeah. I'm just going to show you now, now Dan has got very long legs. Thank this you. is where he falls straight out of the boat. No, it is no. still a stretch. So me with my short legs, I did end up um, yeah, feeling it. I will make mention to this. This is the first small boat that I've ever seen with a fog horn on it. But yeah, safety first. With the shape of the hull, you can see that it is very much like the Warriors. And with a little Samsung post bow roller and a little locker there for your anchor. Explorer Elite are anything up to £18,000 ready to hit the water. Second hand that will vary depending on the condition. Weighing up the comparisons in this video, I have purchased a new family boat. Tagged into the description is a link for my video of things to look for when buying a second hand boat. I hope that it's helpful.